recording because this was really fun. You know how sometimes um, with our backbending practice, sometimes we work really hard for it and you feel effort and you're sore. Um, we're going to work on this a little bit differently today. So a different approach. We are going to have one major strengthening drill, um, which will be, but it's the peak of the strengthening work. And the rest of it, we're going to be using dip, like circles and, and rolling our bodies to um, to try and loosen up and do some backbending. And we haven't done a lot of wall backbending for ages. And this is something we don't get to do a lot of in the studio either because we have a shortage of walls. So I hope you don't have a shortage of walls at home. <laughs> you will need a wall for today's class. You will also need something to put your feet under for the major strengthening drill. Um, I'm going to put my feet under my stage pole and that will mean that I move the computer out into the corridor. Um, you can maybe put your feet under your bed, Anita. You might be able to do, yeah. do that. Just as long as there's something to anchor your feet. Um, or I, if I'm training out in the lounge, I put my feet under my couch. Or if you don't have something to put your feet under, get a human to come in and stand on them. <laughs> and it's really stand on the backs of your ankles while you do what we're going to do. Cool. All right, let's get started. No injuries, guys. I'm not using music today. I just want to talk to you, but I'm going to mute you so that I can concentrate. <laughs> Unmute yourself if you've got any questions, though. I'm more than happy to answer at any time. I'm going to start standing and head over to my mat. And we'll start with the head looking up and down. And just notice the tuck of the chin and the roll back over the neck. Let it become like a fluid rotation. And then bring it back to the center. Notice when your neck is straight and turn your head one way and the other. Keep the shoulders really heavy here. Nice, and then we're going to drop the ear to the side, making sure that the back of the neck is long and the shoulders stay down. And we're going to do a semicircle through the front. So rolling the shin down, taking the top of the head over, the ear to the shoulder and rolling through the middle. Now this movement's going to start to get a little bit bigger. We're going to lift the chest, roll the shoulders back, and then drop one shoulder a tight of time forward. So one shoulder at a time will roll through the front. Let that move down into your waist now. Still, it's just a semicircle. We're not moving backwards, just forwards. Really let the knees bend. Let your hips roll into this as well. Just going in the one direction. Really gooey, really fluid, really floppy. Nice and loose. All the way down to the ground, if you can, with the hands for two more. Feeling into that whole semicircle, making sure the shoulder rolls back at the top and forward at the bottom. All right, now pause at the center. Take a sec to just like find stillness. That can make us quite dizzy, rolling in the one direction over and over again. We're gonna take our semicircle to the other side. So dropping the ear to the side, down through the middle, up and over. I hope you remember which direction you went in. Up and over. Great, now let the shoulders get involved. Just make it nice and small. We're going through the center and the shoulders pull back. Little rib roll. Ribs start to get involved. You want to really feel the ribs pull in and down and then up and open. Coming down into the waist now. Letting the neck move freely through the movement. Oh, I'm coming down into the hips, pouring your weight to one side and scooping it up on the other. I'm going to be turning the knees out, getting very heavy in the legs. Rolling all the way through. We've got three more here. And two. And pause at the bottom on the next one. Just bending into the knees and stretching them out. Bending and stretching the legs. And from bent legs, rolling up with a curled spine. At the top, 
rolling the shoulders back and arching all the way down. Folding in. Don't know how much you make desserts, but you know when you have to fold in when you're making cake using eggs. I think it's a meringue technique, folding. So thinking about this like you're folding. Last two. And the next one, we're going to take all the way to the floor. See if you can take the legs and straighten them a little bit more. Be careful they're not turned out to the side. Just give your hips a little wiggle here. Relax the crown of the head down, grab onto opposite elbows and take a swing. Really let this become a pendulum-like movement. And then release the hands down to the ground, soften the knees and roll all the way up, sweeping the arms up, big breath in. And bending the knees, breath out. Arms come up, inhale. Bend the knees, exhale. Two more. And at the top, interlace your fingers, turn them up toward the ceiling. Take it, the hip and the hands over to one side, sweep them through the front, over to the other side, then all the way back. And I want you to really think about the circles here, nice and slow. Interlacing the fingers, stretching up towards the ceiling. I see Miss Sam Walker has been able to join us. Fabulous. Hello. <laughs> Notice how the armpit opens as you rotate it backwards and how it closes when you're pushing forwards. Let's go the other way. Taking the arms around, making sure the hips keep moving, that the ribs are opening and closing. All right, we're gonna take one arm over to the side, drop the other leg um, and slide it down your leg. So this hand would slide down your leg. Hmm. Rotate your chest up towards the ceiling and keep this arm extended but soft. We're not jarring it out. It's nice and soft. Good, start to pull your tail back, rotate forward and come out to a nice long flat back. Now it's really important here that you keep the chest lifting and the belly lifting as well. We're looking for a long straight spine. The arm that's closest to me is forward. The arm that's furthest from me is back beside your hip. Looking past the index finger, take another breath in here and fold both hands now come towards this ankle. We're gonna use the hands pulling against the leg to really lengthen the spine, take a breath in and the opposite knee will bend away as we breathe out. Come back up, inhale, bend in as you exhale. We've got four more of these. Trying to keep that spine long and straight, careful not to curl through the shoulders. One to go. Great, come to the center and soften the knees as you roll all the way up. At the top, make sure the shoulders lift and roll back. Inhale, both thumbs up. And then the other hand comes down along the thigh as we tip the chest open and open us up to the side. Careful that you don't drop your head onto your ear. We need to keep that neck nice and long and the shoulders, they're drawing back to let the chest move forward. Take another breath in. And we start to pull the tailbone back as this arm will extend forward and the other arm will extend back. Lifting the belly, lifting the chest, lengthening the neck, looking past the index finger, breathe in, and then slowly fold down, long spine, wrapping against the other ankle as you breathe out. Take an inhale, bending the knee to the side, Extending the leg up and bending away. Stand and bend. Coming to the center, instead of bending the knees and rolling up, bring the hands directly underneath your shoulders and press down into the floor with your fingertips. Find a flat back, breathe in. I want you to lift the ribs up into the back. So lift your front ribs up through your chest into your spine. Good, now pull the chest forward, look up. 
pull the ribs in and back and look down. And you'll notice that your tail wants to follow this movement. It's going to start real small. Curling in, lengthening forward. Now we're using our fingertips on our on the floor instead of flat hands. It's going to let us activate all the little muscles around the edges of the armpits here. Really think about those. And really connect to your pinky finger as you move the chest forward and back. Two more. Nice. We're going to spin it to one side into a lunge. Good. Now from here, framing the foot with the hands, we're going to press the hip down and extend the front leg. Arch the back and curl the spine. You can come up onto the fingertips and drop that knee lower to the ground and then curl the ribs in. Good. Three more. Spin it. Come back into that long lunge. Turn to the center. Lift the hips and switch to the other side. So framing the leg in the long lunge here. We're going to push the knee down, lift the chest up, and then extend the front leg, press away. Chest comes up, shoulders pull back. Shoulders press forward as the torso and the front hip pull back. Two more times. Last one. Come into the centre. We're going to turn it all the way back to the front leg, the first leg that we were facing. Hopefully that's towards me. <laughs> then set the other leg back into a plank. We're going to hold this plank for five, four, three, two, one. Lower the knees and sink it back. Hips on your heels in your child's pose. I want you to see if you can extend the hands away from the hips fully. Roll onto the little fingers with the thumbs facing up to the ceiling. If your head isn't resting comfortably on the floor, you can put a pillow or a block underneath your forehead to make you feel supported. We're going to start by lifting the right arm five times and we always lift it on an exhale. Breathe in, lift it up, inhale, exhale, lift, inhale, lower. I can't have any kinky elbows, guys, so if this feels pinchy, extend it out a little wider. Two more. Last one, switch sides. Two, three, four, and five. All right, let's take a rest here. We are gonna lift both arms at once. You might need to tuck your chin in a little bit more and lift the heart up through the shoulder blades. Let the hips really sink down through the feet here. Take a breath in to prepare. Exhale the arms up. One, inhale down. Two, three, four. Hold them up on five. Take a breath in, pulse them up. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Turn the thumbs down, sweep the palms all the way back to rest on your feet. And let the shoulders round. And keep holding onto the feet as we curl up and then release the heels as we roll up and stack the spine, rolling the shoulders back three times once we're sitting up. All right, come forward onto all fours, my loves. Make sure that the elbow creases spin forward here. And rather than thinking about squeezing your shoulders into your back, just wrap the upper arm bones into your ribs. You want to think about the upper back getting really broad here. We want to get a lot of space across the back. So start to send your heart forward, lift the chest. But rather than squeezing into the shoulders, think about creating space through the shoulder blades and the upper back. Heart forward, 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 breathe in. And then curl the ribs in, scoop the pelvis under, breathe out. Creating space, chest pushes forward, wrapping the arms instead into the armpits, breathe in. And slowly curling, breathe out. 
keep moving with that, thinking about lots and lots of room across the back and curling and keeping that space. And curl. And from here, we're gonna take circles. Remember our theme words today are gooey, oozy, that's fluid, unctuous. Let these rolls be all of those things. And take them the other way. All right, find your center, long back, strong belly. Tuck the toes and send the hips back with bent legs into downward dog. Now, really important here that you don't relax into the shoulders. They must push away. In a good down dog, we actually feel our shoulders tickling our earlobes. That's how much you want to push through the arms. We're going to lift up onto the toes and start to walk out the dog one heel at a time. And you can let your hips dance with this. That's fine. Have a little wiggle, feel into it. Now, rolling forward into your plank. From here, I want you to keep space through the upper back as you bend the knees, lift the chest. Keep that up as you press back into the downward dog. Feel the shoulders brush the ears. Again, rolling forward into your plank, bend the knees, keep the upper back broad as you arch, press all the way back. Two more just like that, I'm gonna come and watch you. Pulling forward into the high plank, keeping the back broad. Yes, one more time. Sam, try and make more of a triangle, getting your bottom closer to the ceiling at the top of your down dog. Yeah, you can step your hands and feet a little closer to each other. You don't need to be, yes, nice. You don't need to be so long. Good, nice. Once you're back at the top of that, we're gonna reach our right leg up towards the ceiling, bend the knee, open the hip. Good, can you look out under your right arm up towards your right knee? Spiral it back as far as you can, keep breathing, four, Three, two, one. Step the right foot all the way through the hands at the top of the mat. Take the left foot back as far as you can. Come up onto the fingertips and place the right knee, sorry, left knee down on the ground. Good. Now we're gonna pull the shoulders back as we press the hips forward. And just roll the shoulders here. You can bring the hands up onto the top knee. Nice. I want you to think about the shoulders pulling down towards the hips without squeezing into the middle. That takes away space. So we want to pull the shoulders down and instead focus on all of this space at the front of the chest, pressing forward and curling up. So press forward and curl up by drawing the shoulder blades straight down. So keep the arms down for this point. I want you to feel that left hip rotating forward and the right thigh pulling back. Chin is tucking in. We're not going to let the head drop back. We need to keep this space at the back of the neck. All of these spaces that we need to create more room. The next place we're going to focus on is the sides of the waist. Lengthen them upwards to the fingertips. Nice. So we're only going to turn the pinkies away. So the palms face away from us. Think about that long waist. Lifting the ribs out of the hips, lifting the arms up towards the ceiling. Now push the hips forward, pull the arms back. Take a breath in and start to take the little fingers down towards the ground. The index finger brings the hands up and the little finger pulls away, sending them down. Come up again and away. Now at the top of this one, we're gonna to rotate to the right. Good. Take a breath in, lift the chest, keep the side of the waist long, and your left arm is going to come forward down onto your right knee. Yes. Push back, breathe in, turn your right palm out, 
reach back as far as you can. Now, maybe you can reach your left thigh, maybe you can't. If you've got a block or something, I would much rather you keep your shoulder in a really happy alignment and push down into a block than over twist and make your shoulder pop forward by wrapping around the leg. So hold this. I know that left hip must be screaming by now. Don't worry, guys. We're not here too much longer. Five, four, keep breathing. Three, two, and one. Come back to the center. The arms rise up. Come all the way down. I'm going to tuck those left toes under. Lift the knee. Breathe in. Step it straight back into your down dog and breathe out. And just let those hips wiggle a little bit. Loosen up, get fluid, but be really conscious that the arms and the shoulders are still working really hard to press the ground away. We're long from the wrists and the shoulders all the way to the hips. Let's see if that right heel can sink down towards the floor. Take the left leg up, take a big breath in, and bend it as far over to the right as you can. Send the knee higher, breathe in. Look out through the left armpit, breathing out. Take another inhale here, open the hip. And exhale, step the left foot through the hands at the top of the mat. Up onto the chest. Slide the right foot back, bring the knee down and press the top of the ankle down through the ground. Okay, you can bring the hands more. We started by sweeping them back, rolling the shoulders. And as that movement starts to build, the arms come up and then press them into the thigh. Pressing the hands into the thigh, you might feel once that right hip starts to push down, you need to bring that left foot a little further forward to have the right angle for your anatomy to press away. Shoulders are down, but not in. They're down the sides. Heart is scooping forward and up. Chin is tucked in, neck is long. Collarbones are broad, but the arms are pulling more down than they are rotating away. Bring the arms up, turn the pinkies out. Curl the chest up, push the hip down. Take another breath in, sweep the arms down and around. Index finger comes up, breathe in. Arms circle back and down, breathe out. All the way up, all the way back. Two more. Last one. Now at the top, breathe in. Rotate to the left as you breathe out. Lengthen the right side of the waist, inhale. Right hand comes down onto the left thigh, exhale. Push back, breathe in. And now your left arm is gonna come down onto a block. Collarbones are really spreading apart here. Really leaning back. You want to feel the belly get really long. Pubic bone curling forward. This back butt cheek is squeezing to protect you from dumping your weight through the floor. Bring the arms up as you inhale. Nice long waist. Bring the hand down to the ground, exhale. Tuck the right toes under, lift the knee, breathe in. Step it back into your downward dog, breathe out. Then again, take that gorgeous little chewing gum walk. All right, so those hips are pretty open, like we feel the front of the hip really open now. But what I need a little bit more of is work from your butt. So we've got to get your butt to switch on. We're going to lift the heels, breathe in, bend the knees, breathe out. Do you want to jump all the way through to a seat? I do. Come on. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> Roll down onto the ground. Okay. Cool. So just before we get into the glute work, I need your low bellies working to keep your pubic bone curling towards your ribs so that you're not dumping down. So let's lift that pelvic floor like you're sucking a tampon in and up and feel the belt around your hips press down. We're gonna broaden the collarbones, flatten the shoulders into the floor, extend the right leg up as you breathe in and trace it down towards the ground, keeping the belly flat as you breathe out. 
Up on the inhale, lower down the exhale. Up on the inhale, lower down the exhale. Up on the breath in, bend the knee, pop it down. All right, other side. Squeeze the leg straight, pointy toe, breathe in, lower it down, belly strong, breathe out. Up on the inhale, down on the exhale. Nothing else moves, right? Now keep that left leg up at the top. I need you to pull your ribs and your hips together on the front body, and that's gonna flatten your back almost into the ground. Bring that right leg up as well, so both legs are right on top of the hips, shoulders are flat, collarbones are wide, chin tucked in. Lift that pelvic floor, breathe in, right leg comes down as you breathe out. Belly stays flat, lift it as you inhale. And you feel your ribs pressing down towards your hip as you exhale and the deep belly lifting the leg as you inhale. And this is why we do it super slow because I want you to feel the individual muscles working to create the lowering and the lifting. Try this with me. Let's glue the ankles, the knees together, really squeezing into the thighs. Switch that belly on strong as you breathe in. Lower both legs. They won't go super low. Keeping the belly flat as you breathe out. Bring them back up. And down. Up. And down. Just one more. Up. And down. Bend the knees. Pop your feet on the ground. Nice and close to your hips. All right. Do you all agree that your core is working? You can feel those abs where they're supposed to happen down here. <laughs> Curling the pubic bone back towards the ribs. Good. So we're going to make sure that we can touch our heels with our middle finger. Then take the hands out wider to the side. And I want you to actively push the shoulders out and down. We're going to curl the tailbone under, lift the hips, and then keep the ribs in as we come down. So this one's for our glutes, right? I want you to really feel that bum squeezing to lift the hips. We're not coming into the low back and we're not letting the ribs release just yet. We're just coming up and down, up and down, three, two, Hold at the top. We're going to bring the right knee up towards the chest. Come halfway down. Keep the belly strong. Up for one. Keep the ribs contained. Two. Three. Four. One more here. Five. Bring the right foot down. Push into it. Make sure your hips are square. Bring the left foot up, knee up. We come halfway down. Squeeze up for one. We're squeezing through the right butt cheek. Two. Three, two more, four, five, bring the left foot down, both hips come up, breathe in and roll down onto the ground, breathing out. All right, we're coming back to this position, but for now, we're just going to reach the arms over the head, walk the feet away, take your breath in and breathe out, sit up. Coming back over onto all fours. We're going to start doing, we need that tone in our glutes, right, to keep us really strong in our cobras. And that's what we're coming to now. You won't need a block. This is to help me <laughs> to be my left arm. The first cobras we're going to do today are intense. You've got to glue your ankles together. If you've got a strap and you want the help of not being able to cheat, you can actually tie your feet together. <laughs> I'm not going to be that hardcore. Um, but we're going to start with the hands quite far forward and the forehead down on the ground. I want you to squeeze your butt cheeks together like someone's given you a $100 bill, but we're outside. It was about 2 o'clock. It's super windy, and you've got to hold it between your butt cheeks without that $100 bill flying away. Roll the shoulders back. Don't squeeze them in. Just roll them back towards the hips. And we're going to start to push the pubic bone down through the floor. So you want to feel the tailbone tucking under. Then the nose comes up. We're lengthening through the neck. So the shoulders are pushing down to the ribs. We feel these muscles really switch on. Cool. And I want you to feel that you're peeling back over the upper back now. So the heart's pushing forward and we're peeling ourselves back, really using all the muscles between our ribs and our back body. You can move the arms forward if you need to so that your shoulders don't decrease the space around your ears. 
So keep pushing the pubic bone down, keep your feet together, keep them pushing through the floor, keep squeezing into your bottom and see how far you can come up. And once you're at the top of how much you can roll back, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Start to slowly ooze back down, slowly ooze, right? Slowly, slowly. Three, two, one, bring your hands under your head, let your feet come apart, give your hips a little wriggle. We're gonna do that one more time. So we're gonna come up as slowly as we can in that really strong, not very high feet together back bend. Really using our muscles. So we're gonna squeeze into the knee, squeeze into the ankle, squeeze into the thighs, the under bum is on, the butt cheeks are squeezing together. We tuck the tailbone under and the pubic bone presses down into the ground. We bring those hands forward to the shoulders, start on the forehead. Here we go. The nose comes forward, lengthens the neck and the collarbones start to reach up. The hands are pressing down, those elbows wrap under. Keep the toes pressing down as the arms spiral the elbows up to the ceiling. Good, wrapping the arms into the body, tucking the tailbone under, keeping the feet together. Open, 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 hold for five, four, three, heart forward, two, one. And we very slowly, very slowly, one millimeter at a time, we're returning down into the ground. Come on, one rib at a time, not two, not three. We can shift the arms forward. And the forehead is the last thing to come down. Now that you're here, you can bend your knees and let them windshield wipe. Because I get feet cramps. There's so much tension in the keeping the feet together version. All right, you can let your feet come apart now so that they're about hips distant. We're gonna do the same exercise with the hands right back under the shoulders, if that's available to you, if that causes compression between your shoulders and your ears, move the hands further forward. It's much more important that you're able to really use your strength to lift rather than dump into this. So we're gonna keep the head down, tuck the tailbone under. I don't want you to just feel the feet pushing into the floor. I want you to feel the tops of the ankles pushing down through the ground for this one. So lots of activity in the legs. Forehead is down, tailbone is tucked, navel is scooping inwards and up. We're gonna press down through the hands. Lengthen the nose, the chin, the throat forward and keep your shoulders pulling back towards the hips, not in, just back. You're really pressing down through the arms here. Peeling back, peeling back through the upper back, peeling back through the middle of the shoulders, peeling back. So you need that space. If you squeeze your shoulders together, there's no space. But if you push down through the arms, you can peel back and go further, further, further and hold. And slow me down, really slow. Just as slow as you came up. And once you're finally back onto the ground, have a rest. You're going to do that one more time. I'm going to watch you. All right, start with your forehead on the floor. Push the ankles down through the ground. Really pushing the hands through the ground. Take a breath in. And then tuck the tailbone, start to push through the hands as you breathe out. Neck lengthens forward, chin lifts. Looking forward. Good, start to peel back through the neck and push the shoulders down towards your hips. So start to push through the hands so the shoulders lengthen away. Good, nice and slow, nice and slow, don't rush it. Good, opening up. Come on, Sally, see if your shoulders can travel back towards your hips anymore. Good, Wheats looks amazing, Sam looks amazing. I can see Anita's head now, looking awesome. Keep pushing. Now at the top of this one, if you feel like you've got further to go, you can walk your hands further back towards your body. If you feel you've got more to give, just keep those shoulders pulling back. Don't let them rotate forward. You wanna feel your whole arm wrapping towards the backs of your ribs for three, two, 
One, slowly coming down, slowly moving the hands forward, controlling one rib at a time. Keep the head looking up. The head not allowed to look down until last because it's the sequence of the spine. You want one vertebrae at a time to one rabble. Beautiful, pop your head under your hands. For this one, you're gonna pull your ribs in and press your elbows down to counter pose. Good, holding that, really actively pressing away and then releasing. Okay, so I've got my feet under my stage pole. My arms are gonna come forward like this, cool. My chin is tucking in, I'm squeezing my butt and curling my pubic bone down into the ground. I'm gonna lift my chest as high as I can and then slowly come back down. It's really important that the arms travel back by your ears. So you've got 10 of these, you're looking forward, lengthening the neck and the arms are moving up and back. One, two, cool, so nice straight arms. Weeks has got it going already. Come on guys, let's go. Yes, good, good, good. Try and really lengthen upwards. And on this, on the last five, try and find a moment at the top to catch. Hold and then down. Hold and then down. Get those arms up higher if you can. Throw them up. Nice. So strong. So strong. Good work. All right. That's this is the last thing on the front. Then we're going to lie on our back and start moving like seaweed. And then we're going to stand up and do the gooey backwards. So lie on your tummy. Make sure that your feet and your knees and the center of your sits bones travel in two straight lines. So the legs aren't wide. They're not squeezing together. They're in parallel. We're going to have our elbows directly under the shoulders. I'd like you to work towards having your thumb lining up with the center of the shoulder and then pressing the hand down through the floor. So a lot of the time when we work our back bends, we try and really squeeze the shoulders back and push the heart forward. And it's actually not great for us. It takes all the space away. We want to create this. The back bend doesn't just come from here. It also comes from the little spaces between the ribs. There's little muscles, intercostal muscles. So if you feel like your elbows are able to claw back and your shoulders are able to roll back without squeezing in, you can actually peel over those tiny spaces through the backs of the ribs. Keep pressing down through the elbows. Keep lengthening the neck as much as you can, curling the pubic bone under. So you want the pubic bone to feel like it's rising up towards the ribs. It's really long energy, really open. Holding here for another five and four. Keep breathing, long, slow breaths. And three. And two. And one. Bring the hands back. Press yourself up and come back into child's pose. Okay, so, so this is a wavy arm scenario. We're gonna come up into our bridge and your arms are gonna slide along the floor. So you can't see my left arm. If I had one, it would roll under me. I'm gonna roll onto my left shoulder as my right hand comes over in front of my throat. Cool, so it circles all the way over. Then I'm gonna circle back onto my right shoulder my right arm will come down by my side and I roll over to the right and my left hand, if I had one, would circle all the way over in front of my throat. So that's one round. You've got five rounds. So we circle back onto both shoulders. The arm sweeps around. We roll to the side and you're pushing the hips up the whole time. Cool. Let me see. Yes, you got it, Sam. Nice. Let me see. Let me see. Five rounds, keep your fingers in contact with the floor unless space prohibits it. Sally, try and trace your hand up towards, towards your head, like sweep it along the floor. Yes, yeah, so we're rolling shoulder to shoulder. 
keeping pressing the hips up as much as you can. You just have five rounds, rolling shoulder to shoulder. shoulder. Beautiful. Once you've done your five rounds, relax down on the ground. Nice. Cool. So we're going we're gonna to take our bridge and you're going to try and interlace your fingers with the fingertips coming into a pin pistol grip underneath you. So once your hips come up, you can now open the ribs fully, walk the shoulders towards each other, pistol grip the fingers and really try and push the arms down through the feet. Again, it's down, not in. You do walk your shoulder blades together, but that's to open your chest more. And you wanna get this amazing amount of bend here. Yeah, really keep pushing the hips up. The more you pull the, the shoulder blades together, open the ribs, push the hips up. Keep breathing there. Keep pushing through your index fingers for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the hands apart, bring them wider than the hips, and slowly roll down. Excellent work. All right, we're going to hug the knees to the chest, have a little rock and roll. Whatever feels good. You can even rock, rock like this. Put the hands under the knees. And we're gonna sit. Okay, so over here, the first thing we're gonna practice is just hips forward and shoulders back. Hips forward, shoulders back. And it's gonna become a body roll. Let's do it. Stand up. <laughs> cool. So we want the tailbone to scoop forward so we feel like we're, you know, kind of lazy. Hips come forward. Shoulders roll back. Chest comes up. The belly gets long and the hips shift back. Scoop it under. Good. Now what happens if the arms get involved? Can we bring the arms up and down? Up and down. Keep the arms up. Interlace the fingers. Press the palms towards the ceiling. We're going to now continue the body roll. Up and through. Keeping that rocking through the arms. Nice and release the arms down. So the first thing before we come back into our back walking is I want to work on you a shape on with you a shape called the W bend. And for a W bend, we have to take our toes in and our knees towards each other in a duck squat. And that's going to create a little bit more space through the low back. So we don't ever want to hinge into the low back, but we've been working a lot on our upper back and a W bend does bend at the low back. So the toes turn in, the knees turn in and the hips lengthen backwards. Interlace your fingers, press your palms towards the ceiling, really lengthen the sides of the waist as you breathe in and then start to lift the chest up, pulling the arms back as you breathe out. Keep pushing into the knees and the hips pull back. Nice, so this is our W bend. Come back up with the arms first and then extend the legs, turn the toes out, bring the arms down. So I wanna see this sideways. I'm gonna show this to you. I think I was a little bit more back than sideways. So I'll show it to you, yeah, properly sideways. So toes and knees are in, I lengthen my bum back, I reach my arms up, I keep pushing my bottom and my chest back as far as I can. I lengthen up, I stand and release. Do you see what's happening there? Let me check you guys. Yep, beautiful, it's nice. Good, yes, Sally, awesome, beautiful, Anita. See if your tailbone could, yes, Sam, gorgeous. Try and reach your arms back a little further. Gorgeous. And then the chest lengthens up before the legs extend. Good work, guys. So that's our W bend. We're going to come back to that once we're finally on the floor. Not yet. <laughs> so we're going to work with back bending against the wall. 
but not in like a forceful way, not in a quick way, not in a bent elbow kind of marching your hands down way. We're going to do this in a really, I'm creating space and I'm moving into the wall like a gooey little liquid human kind of way. So my feet start, I've got a mat between me and the wall and my feet will be just wider than my hips. And the very first action I have to take is to scoop my tailbone forward and lengthen my body. From there, my arms are going to reach up and I'm going to look back for the wall. And once my hands find the wall, watch this action. Watch this bit. This is the bit that's different to how you've done this before. So once my hands find the wall, I'm actually going to slide them wide and that will naturally take them down. So rather than thinking in and down, I'm going to reach out. So once I'm here, fingertips to the wall, reach out through the fingertips, just as far as you can, bring them back up all the way to the ceiling and then the arms come down. So don't try to bend into the low back so much. Try and push the hips forward and get long through this space. All right, let me have a look at you. Bring those hands to the wall. Bring them wide as you slide them down. Cool. Keep pushing the hips forward. Try not to bend the elbows so much, Anita. You don't need to go that deep. You're just taking your straight arms for a slide. The hips pushing forward. Nice. And then up. Good. Now, if you felt like you were unsupported, you can come in closer to the wall. If you felt like you could go a bit deeper, but you needed some more room, you can come further away. Cool. So if you come further away, you gotta really make sure. And when I'm pushing my hips forward, it has to be at least as far as my toes, preferably further than the toes. So tucking the tailbone under, really pushing the hips forward, lengthen, 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 find the wall and see how far down your hands can go. Cool. And I'm not concerned about being able to get to the ground. I'm concerned about using my strength and exploring the space that I'm creating. How much space I can create. Good, it's looking good. So I'm going to try this with my wrist against the wall. I'll unmute you after this attempt because I want to make this accessible to you. And wrist against the wall is pretty advanced. It can be a lot of compression for some people, in which case blocks can help. Um, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I'm going to start my wheel with my wrist against the wall. And I'm really hugging my elbows in and I push myself up. And the wall gives me something to aim my chest towards. So you're walking your feet in, you can lift your heels, that's fine. And you're trying the three breaths to touch your chest against the wall. And then you walk your feet out, you look up at the ceiling and very carefully come back to the ground and circle your wrist. So let's see how you go with wrists against the wall. Yes, Sally, amazing. Come on, Sam, push. Yes, good weeks. Anita's like trying to work this in the tiniest space possible. Excellent work, guys. You can hug the knees and go for a couple of circles. That looked really, really good. All right, so. Did you notice that wrists against the wall gives you a lot straighter arms? You, you all did really well at that. Like you can get a lot more push and a lot more open through the upper back bend. Like we've created a lot of space today. So with that in mind, I'm going to get us to do a little bit of single leg first. And then we're going to try a W bend. Was everyone, can I get a thumbs up if everyone's happy to continue with wrists against the wall? Cool. Yes. Awesome. All right, so a little bit of single leg work. I'll give you different levels to work on. So trying to get the chest to the wall. 
Bringing one foot towards the midline, bringing the other knee up. Tapping that toe down, transferring the weight. <laughs> this is my wonky side. Bringing the leg up. Cool, that's level one. Level two is, <laughs> now that I've done my wonky side, everything is off. Bring the knee up, extend to the toe. And you can either bend it and take it down or you can turn it into a wave. Cool. Don't fall over. You'll be a lot more stable with two wrists against the wall, I promise. <laughs> Wave it in again, Alex. Yes, nice. One more on this side, then switch. So it might be just trying to find the balance. Yes, Sam, gorgeous. Come on, Sally. That switch is so hard, isn't it? I feel you. <laughs> I really feel you. Once transferring weight, I'm so much better if I go out and come back into it again. And then slowly down, controlling it down. Nice. Really good, guys. Okay, once we've had enough of like single leg stuff, make sure after class that you feel balanced because you might notice that one hip like took load for longer than the other. So the last one we are going to try with our wrists on the wall is the W bend that we practice standing up. Now, this is exactly the same. Once we're in our wheel, we have to bring our knees and toes, toes turn in and our knees will walk, knock together and you have to practice sticking your bottom out in your wheel. That can be really difficult, but having your wrists against the wall helps so much because it gives you that knowing that you're not going to push through and fall over. So I'm going to demo this for you. It's the picture I used to promote the class. Okay. You don't have to start with your feet in a different position to normal. You can walk them there. It's cool. They so come up. My wrists are against the wall. I walk it in. I bring my, my knees towards each other. Yeah, I really wrap my knees towards each other and then I sink my hips down. Cool. Knees knock in. Sink your hips down. It takes a few goes to find your maximum depth. Cool. So just practice with it. Feel into that. It's really awkward and it takes a lot of practice to get a good W bend in your back bend. Sinking your hips down when you're in a back bend is very counterintuitive. <laughs> you want to think about pushing your bum into a chair, like someone's holding onto your hips and pushing it down. So make sure your toes turn in as your knees point to each other. Good. And then you want to push your bum down towards your wrist. Yeah, weights. Keep the arms long. Push into the wall. Nice. Toes turn in. Try and keep the chest up as the hips come down. Just the hips. Awkward, right? I think we've all found our homework. <laughs> nice. Good, so you're gonna turn your toes in towards each other. Walk. Don't try and walk too close to the wall. Just walk your toes, turn your toes in. Yeah, so your knees can touch. So you might need to come a little bit further and bring your feet a bit closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're after. Good. Nice work, guys. Tough one, huh? That W bend. All right, it is eight o'clock. So that was our... That was our peak today, your W back bend. I'll unmute you while we do our cool down twists. Just in case you have any questions or if you want to tell me that that was not gooey enough and slightly brutal. <laughs> How are we feeling, guys? What out? <laughs> what out, yeah, after, after fitness, I can imagine. My boyfriend's sitting on the bed and he said, we all look like we're possessed. <laughs> <laughs> that Love it. to be creepy. All right, take one leg out straight, cross the other leg to the thigh side and wrap yourself around into a twist. 
<laughs> after back bends is super, super important. Yeah. And then come back to the center. We're going to immediately switch sides. And you know what muscles work super duper hard for you when you're back bending? Abs? No. They're long. They're getting lengthened. Your glutes, your butt, um. your hips up. So I'm going to take a pigeon stretch, a half pigeon. Bending one knee. Make sure these toes are on to protect your knee joint. Sink the hips down. And even here, just with this leg that's best, this is my right leg, I'm going to bring my left hand towards my right knee and reach my right hand back into a gentle twist. And then we're going to take a much more passive twist, stepping the right hand forward, lace your left arm through the hole, your left shoulder and your left knee will come down onto the ground. So this is also giving your shoulders a stretch. And I promise you, the more you pull your ribs in and press the shoulder down, the better it feels. And slowly coming up. Let's switch sides. So we're going to go the other way. I'm going to be facing away from you. Look at that half pigeon. Making sure that the hips both feel the same distance from the floor. Taking the hand across, coming into the twist. your left hand forward, placing the other arm through, coming down onto the shoulder. Oh, and the more you press the upper arm down through the ground, pull the ribs back, the better the stretch feels. And then releasing the stretch. Coming up. Roll onto your knees, tap your toes underneath you. Roll the chin into the chest, press the hips back. Press the heels down and roll up and stack. One, vertebrae, and You feel like you've been put back together? Yeah. It feels like they'll be sore tomorrow? <laughs> 